Hi, good morning everybody. It's Travelling Jones here and it's a beautiful sunny, sunny day here again in Warrington. Right, as you know, I've been um, doing the daily reading from, um, from a book, but today we're going to be looking at um, information which can be found in, in three separate books. I've spoke to you before with experts, uh, excerpts from uh, Life in the, in the Fasting Lane. Then I did a video of this one yesterday which was um, the art and science of low carbohydrate living and I'm going to combine that today with the carbon calorie counter. So what I'm going to look at today and have a chat with you about is um, how people tend to look at everything to do with weight loss as calories. Um, I don't go there myself because calories is based on thermodynamics and a calorie is defined as the amount of heat required to raise one gram of water through one degree centigrade so um, we're not burning anything so we're not involved with thermodynamics but that's a little bit of science out of the way. Okay so I'm going to first of all look at what it says in in Life in the Fasting Lane which is by Dr Jason Fung, Eve Mayer and Megan Ramos. So I'm going to be reading from here and I put a marker in the page already because I've done a little bit of homework on this. So this is chapter four and it's it says here in chapter four, resist calorie, oh sorry, forget calorie restriction, got it right. And this is um, written by Eve May. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just going to read out of this now. I can't tell you how many times I've heard some, someone repeat some version of, put the fork down honey and you'll lose that weight. If you're like me, you've tried to eat less a thousand times and each and every time you've failed, me too happened to me. I've dabbled in the art of dieting since I was eight, this is Eve speaking, when I first started worrying about getting chunky and pretty much all of these efforts involved some version of cutting calories. So this is another way to say calorie restriction. Calories in versus calories out. Eating less or eating smaller meals more often. The energy balance equation Portion control, in scientific terms, the law of thermodynamics, and I, I spoke about that a few minutes ago. So here we go, this is on page 43 now. My first real diet was probably the most ridiculous version of cal calorie restriction you can imagine. When I was in my early teens, I put on an extra 15 pounds. After carefully considering what food always filled me up, I proudly designed a diet around it. Ladies and gentlemen, my creation was called the candy bar diet. Sounds good. <laughs> I skipped breakfast and lunch, and at the dinner table every night, I tripped my mum by pushing food around my plate and eating a bite or two when I wasn't talking. At school in the afternoon, when my stomach had really started rumbling, I creep into the stairway, stairwell where the vending machine stood, and I'd secretly purchase one Kit Kat. I'd peel back the paper from the Kit Kat and make my delicious meal. So, reading on a bit, um, here we go, let me have a look now. I knew that if I could eat a thousand calories a day, I would lose weight. A Kit Kat only contains 218 calories, so I would be skinny in no time, and, that, and that's what happens. The Kit Kat diet lasted one week and I lost six pounds. After one week of feeling like crud and being hungry all the time, I officially gave it up and went back to eating as I had before. I gained nine pounds in the following two weeks. So the idea of going on a diet always started the same way for me. I'd look down at my rolls of belly fat, I'd feel my thighs rubbing against each other, and i think about the promise of a new life. You know, we all do that. We've all been there, haven't we? We've all been there with this. I'm moving on a bit here now. Um, let's have a look. Okay. I've eaten 200, 600, 800, 1200, and 1800 calories a day, and I've always lost weight at first. Yes, I've always felt grumpy, tired, angry, frustrated, distracted and miserable doing it. The less I consumed, the hungrier I felt and the more times I failed to lose weight, the more I reinforced the belief that I was a failure. Feeling hopeless, I'd eat whenever, whatever I wanted when I was off my diet and not only did I gain the weight back but I added a few extra pounds for good measure. I call this my big fat circle of despair because it's a dangerous ride. I can never safely escape from and the only time I felt happy is in the day or two before I started a new diet. So, you know, 
we've been we've been led to believe that counting calories is important. So I'll now have a look in, in this particular book here, The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living. And this is on um, here we are. This is on page 263. I would encourage you to go out and buy these books because they're really, really informative. They're the kind of books that you can pick up and put down. So it's not like a story where there's a beginning, a middle, and then you can just dip into it. It's like a reference book. So here we go. This is, is it simply calories in, calories out? We hear this all the time. The more people hear it, the more people believe it must be true. Similar to the phrases, a calorie is a calorie. Weight control becomes seductively simple, except weight gain and weight loss are far more complex. Hmm. We now know a lot more about macronutrient effects on hormones and gene regulation and how these relate to fat storage and fat utilisation. To continue to push the simplistic calories in, calories out mantra limits our therapeutic options. This is especially tragic for people who are carbohydrate intolerant in the long run, they will likely fail in making long-term diet changes with a low-calorie approach. It's happened to me. I've done it myself. Which is generally low in fat and high in carbohydrate. This leads to weight cycling and ultimately higher body fat. Not only is this physically damaging, but there is also the psychological cost of adding another failure. More guilt because of a lack of willpower and lack of control. I've said it before, we've got to take back control. It's our fault that we put weight on. Can't blame anybody else. It was my hand that fed my mouth. I put my food in there. Remember that it is easier to change behaviour when what you're eating is supporting your body to work properly. That this is particularly true for people with carbohydrate intolerance was recently demonstrated by Dr. Gardner's A to Z study analysis. And that's mentioned in Chapter 7 of this book. So if you want to know what's... It's in there. Get the book. It's up to you as their practitioner to help each patient. So this is obviously aimed at the medical profession where it's up to you as a practitioner. It's up to you as their practitioner to help each patient with the best diet choice to achieve in long-term success based on their individual metabolic responses to food. And I could carry on from there because it says one size does not fit all. And then there's another paragraph here, what you and your patients can expect. Okay, so, so that's a brief introduction to calories, um, counting calories. So this is a great, great book. Fabulous, fabulous book this is. And I like it because there's pictures in it. I think I mentioned this before. And um, I've bookmarked a couple of, couple of pages in here. Well, let me have a look. Okay. Hands up if you like a drink. I don't drink a lot. But here we go. Look at look at this. 125 millimeter, milliliter small glass of wine is 95 calories. 95 calories. How many carbohydrates? Zero, zilch, nada, none. No carbohydrates in a glass of red wine. Wow. But that's one one and a half, one and a half units. So we got to be careful with the unit. We don't want to be drinking wine every ten minutes. Right, um, a 250 milliliter large glass, that's um, a quarter of a, yeah, quarter of a litre, is one gram of carbs and 190 calories. So if you were counting calories, you'd be frightened to death of, um, of having your wine. You know, so it's very important to understand the difference between carbohydrates and calories. And because we've never been taught and educated on this, we need books like this to help and guide us. So let's have a look at something else that um, that we can see. So, so if you have um, a two, sorry, a two hundred fifty millimeter, which is a large glass of white wine. So this is white wine now, equal to three units. Two grams of carbs, one hundred and eighty-eight calories. Right, two grams of carbs. Moving on to a jacket potato. A jacket potato has got. 320 calories, so you'd be frightened to death of eating that. But it's got 75 grams of carbs, and we know it's the carbohydrate that does the damage because our bodies convert that carbohydrate into glucose, which then affects our blood sugar. The insulin comes along, takes it out, slams it the excess on our body, that which we don't use, as fat, and bang, 
we're walking around with tons of food on our bodies. Well, for me, it was a lot of food anyway. Um, so, so just moving on a little bit more, let's have a look at another item in here. I just earmarked some pages off before. What was this? I think this is one of the asparagus that I marked off. Sorry about the delay, folks. Let's get, we'll get there. Okay, there we go. This is it, just found it. Right. Um, <clears throat> 80 grams of asparagus. 80 grams of asparagus. See the picture there on that page. 80 grams of asparagus is 21 calories. But it's one gram of carbs. So if you look at, remember the carbs in the wine, there was one or two grams of carbs, but the, the calorific value was different. So therefore, if you went down to, to the wine and you were looking at the wine, you'd say, oh my word, I can't have that because there's 95 calories in it. Or, or I can't have um, a 250 milliliter glass of wine, there's 188 calories in that. The two grams of carbs, exactly the same as there is in 120 grams of um, asparagus. So calories don't equate. It's, it's the carbohydrate that causes the problem. It's the carbohydrate that causes the problem. And just one last thing I've got marked in here. Um, vodka. Vodka's got 25 milliliter glass of vodka has got um, 56 calories in it. So if you were counting calories, you'd be adding that up. But in terms of carbohydrates, it's zilch carbohydrate. So if you wanted to, you could drink vodka all day. It wouldn't affect your carbs, but it'd screw your liver up. So, so let's not go down that road. But this book here is packed and packed and packed with portion sizes showing you what you can and can't see or what you shouldn't see or how many calories and carbs it's got in it. We looked at the sandwich here, 226 calories for a sandwich, and yet the carbohydrate content is 22 grams of carbs. Now you might say, well, 22 grams of carbs isn't high. Well, it, it probably not, but the way that we eat bread and we eat it with every meal, and these, these carbohydrates pile on, and then you have a chocolate biscuit, and then you have a sweet, and all the other stuff, and we know what happens. So if anybody's piling weight on, you know, it's, it's, it's through what we're doing. And the carbohydrates in our body turn into glucose, affects our, our blood sugar levels. And that's where type 2 diabetes comes from. Because our blood sugar levels are too high. Or some people prefer, don't like to use the word blood sugar. Is, um, the blood glucose levels are high. Um, and then you end up with a condition called insulin resistance. So anyway, you know, a great book. Carbon Calorie Counter. There's, there's the details on the back. It's £14.99 for that book. If you want to go deep into the science, get the art and science of low carbohydrate living. It's a great book. Um, and if you want to know more about fasting, because this isn't everybody's cup of tea, uh, if you want to get more about fasting, get this book, which is Life in the Fasting Lane, as you can see by Dr. Jason Fung, Eve Mayer, and Megan Ramos. So I hope these little videos here are helping you. I just want to encourage you to do, to, to do the right thing. Look, we've all got questions and we don't know all the answers. I don't know all the answers, but I know what works for me. And by understanding the science behind what works, I was able to make a difference. I took back control of my life. I was looking at the mirror and saying, whose fault is it that, that I'm fat? Why do I look the way I do? And it was my fault. I had to blame somebody. But I didn't want to blame me. I wanted to blame everybody else. But it was my fault. So we've got to be... I mean, I saw that I was self-harming. Self-harming. Eating all these carbohydrates day after day after day. Snacking. Drinking all these sweet, sugary drinks. Didn't do us any good at all. So come on, guys. If you're serious about getting healthy, because you have to get healthy to lose weight, then learn more about what works. I'm classed as an EB, which is an expert by experience, and it's evidence-based. It's evidence-based because I'm, I look totally different, I feel totally different, and I can do things that I couldn't do before. So I want to help you, I want to encourage you. 
stay with us on this. Any problems, any questions you've got, we've got medical people, wonderful lady called Dr. Joanne McCormack, who's available to help you. You can go on to our Keep Fat Club, which is on Facebook there. Lots of information there, people posting information on there as well. So have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Don't venture out until it's absolutely necessary. And God bless you in your house. Bye.